All right, so what to make up today to make sure you get the content is first um, in that makeup page, watch the overpopulation video that you see thumbnailed here. That'll run you through the demographic transition and what it means and its implications for the world. Um, demographic transition, one of the most important concepts from this year and also just generally for the world if we're gonna have enough resources and all that. Touching on topics from last class. Once you've watched that video, um, come back to this one and I'll walk you through the notes that you'll need. Um, so now that you've watched the overpopulation video, um, you'll need the graph section of 2.2. So you can pause the video, pull up the graph section. It was on the back side of 2.2. Um, AP expects that you can look at either this classic image with the, the line graph of the demographic transition in the five stages you read about last week, um, or that you could look at a population pyramid and identify where a country is and what benefits or drawbacks are to where that country is as far as its population and its population growth. So this really need to make sure that you get this. So a stage one country, and no country today is in this, but as you saw in the overpopulation video, um, this was the whole world 200 years ago, including US and Europe. Um, and what for your first graph it will look like is a ton of births on the bottom. So the very bottom x-axis is birth. So that's how many babies are born. So lots of babies born because people have to compensate for the fact that um, a lot of their kids are going to die. They're not going to survive. Also, there's not reproductive health care, access to reproductive health care, et cetera. So lots of babies, but then most don't live. So it's a pyramid that has like deeply sunk in. Um, and you'll see when we get to the um, you applying this part that, again, no country is in stage one anymore, but you'll see that many look like they're just left stage one. So some of our poorest countries still look very close to this, but they are technically have moved into stage two. Stage two will look more like a classic pyramid. Again, no country is perfect, but there might be a tiny bit of curvature still um, based on life even just 10, 20 years ago. But it'll look more like a classic pyramid where people are still having the same number of babies because they, ha they haven't yet figured out like, oh, I don't need to compensate for the fact that my, more of my kids will survive past the age of five and into age 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, et cetera. Also, access to reproductive health care in a country in stage two is usually still pretty low. So there is that. Stage three is going to, you're still going to see elements of the pyramid still there from when the country was in stage two. So usually like age 40 and higher will look pyramidal, but then it's going to be fairly chopped off and straight down from like age 40, 30 and below. It will go straight down. This is where the birth rate has started to decline but it still has elements of the state, you know, the people that were alive in stage two um, are there at the kind of the top of the pyramid. But in the last 20, 30, 40 years, either access to medical or to reproductive health care has diffused to the country. And they've also figured out like, oh, I don't need to have 10 kids to compensate for the fact that six of them will die and not survive past the age of five. So that's why the birth rate drops. A stage four country, United States, the birth rate has um, stabilized at a low point along with the death rate that was already stabilized because of the diffusion of medical care. So a stage four country is going to look closer to a bullet. So pretty straight up from zero all the way into like the 60s and then it will start to curve a little bit towards the top because we all do still start to die 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So will be fairly straight. Again, no country is a perfect model, but will be fairly straight down with a little bit of curvature at the top. And then a stage five country, you're going to want to draw two things. One is like this. So a stage five country in this model is where they had such a population under population crisis, meaning they were not replacing themselves. So on average, people are having one baby instead of two to replace themselves. Um, and so they've got a negative population, so a negative NIR, meaning there's not enough young kids, not enough workers, not enough young people to care for the elderly, et cetera. Um, and so, again, this is a lot of this is theoretical, hypothetical, because 
so few countries have reached this point, but Japan is close, Finland, Norway, some Eastern European countries are at this point where they're below replacement level and they uh, start encouraging birth, usually through things like paying for diapers, health care, all, all, all kinds of things like that to get people to have more kids. So stage five can go either way. You'll want to copy the, the bullet that's got the flare out at the end, meaning the birth rate has increased because the government is usually encouraging people, sponsoring people to have more kids. Or if that hasn't happened yet, draw like a little dotted line inwards where it would be like the bullet, but at the very bottom it is the bullet is curved in because the birth rate has dropped so low. So a stage five country will start where it's curved in and then, in theory, the government starts encouraging more births and it flares out. Stage five is kind of one of these unknowns of demographics of, again, just a few countries have just tipped into stage five. And we'll see what that truly looks like in the world as it plays out as more countries enter into that. Again, this is the, the edge of demographics of we just don't know what the world will look like um, for those countries uh, in a couple decades okay so that's what to get down on your chart and now what you'll do is you're going to be testing yourself on some models so you saw uh, in the makeup folder there's a test set of um, materials and there's a challenge set so what you should pull up um, from that that file folder is the machine learning sheet. You're going to skip the machine learning part, so um, always skip the column that says the programming side. You're not going to make up that. But you should first look at your test set, so T1, T2, T3, T4, and write what stage you think it's in and why. And then look at the challenge set, C1, C2, C3, C4, and what still, these are all countries that for whatever reason their, their population pyramid defies what a normal period pyramid would look like. So what do you think is going on and why? Why does it look so funky from the model? Okay, and that's what you'll turn in for today. The other thing to make up that I'll show you is that 10-3 exit ticket where you'll practice with a real FRQ on population growth. Homework is 2.3 and that should be it as far as your makeup work.